So it's winter, we've been pruning, and pruning results in a great abundance of scion wood, which we're then gonna use to attach to our rootstocks. So we've got all the tools and equipment and materials laid out, and this is everything you'll need to graft and create your very own tree. So starting on the left here, we've got our rootstocks. We've got two rootstocks here. We have M9, a more restrictive rootstock, and MM106. And that's what most of our trees are, are grafted on. Other tools you're gonna need is your knife, grafting knife. This one's a Tina. We also have a Falco knife, just an example of the different knives you can use. Our grafting tape. So this is what you're gonna wrap your graft up with to make it tight and secure. This tape here, different. It's actually an elasto tape. It's to cover your thumb. When you're making the cuts, it just helps to protect it because you're doing quite close contact knife work and you just wanna protect your thumb, especially if you're doing repeated grafts throughout the day. This wood here is actually cornus or dogwood. The idea is you can use this to practice. This is a slightly softer wood and you'll just get nice clean cuts. So you can warm up on this before you start using your slightly more valuable rootstocks or obviously your, your scion wood as well. So we have these on the bench and these are actually things we've collected from the gardens. And this is where the tree has naturally grafted itself. So finally, a few of the other pieces we have on the bench here, labels. Labels are very important. You're gonna have specific cultivars or varieties, and that's the important part of what you're doing here. You need to know once you've collected it, keep it labeled, but also once you pot it up. So uh, we'll be naming our cultivars as we go. We also have our, our grafting wax here, not molten at the minute, but the idea is once we've taped our graft, we use the, the brush and the melted wax just to, to go over the tape, and it just helps to secure and give it a firm base so the first thing to do once you've got your bench all set up is uh, get yourself protected and, and get your, your thumb tape on. And this is just going to really help when you're making those cuts, like I said before, to, you're going to draw the blade right through the wood and it's going to finish on your thumb. So this is why you put the grafting tape on your thumb. Just a few wraps just helps to give you that protection. You want enough to protect yourself but you want to be able to also feel what's going on. You use your thumb through the whole process so you need to uh, still have a bit of flexibility in movement. So it's a balance between protection and also feeling what's going on. You're working with a knife, a very sharp knife. So just be aware of what you're doing at all times. And the idea is to really mechanize your body. You want your elbows as tight as possible. And what you're gonna do is be cutting towards yourself. And this is why we have the practice wood. It's a little softer and easier to run through and you'll get that feel of what you're doing. So you'll have your corners, dogwood. And what you're gonna try and do, or what you want to do, is cut through the wood, and you're gonna use the, the entirety of the blade from, from base to tip as you run through it, you're cutting towards yourself, you're gonna lock your elbows in nice and tight, and the blade is gonna finish on your thumb. This is why you have the tape on it. And you're gonna cut between something between a, a, a 45 and 60 degree cut. So, so let's start with a few practice cuts, push it through. You can see it's quite a bit of resistance there. After the first cut's been made, it actually reduces some of the tension and you can just sort of, you see that cuts a little easier. What you're looking for is a very flat, straight cut. So you can just keep practicing. That's a pretty good one. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy with that one. So this is, a, a, this is a good cut. It's a nice flat, straight cut with a pretty good angle. So this is your whip cut that you've made. The next move is to make the tongue cut. So you hold it again, quite closely towards yourself, mechanize yourself up again. And what you're gonna do is around halfway down the cut, just over halfway, is you're just gonna seesaw the blade through. And as you can see, this is why grafting is a dangerous activity. You are cutting towards yourself again, and you just have to work with control, work slowly. And the seesawing motion of the blade means that you're not pushing with too much force, but you're getting the cut that you need. So something like that, and that is creating the tongue cut that you require. And now we're gonna cut this with the red cornice, our, our scion wood. So what I was looking for when I was selecting my wood is the same sort of diameter. Ideally, what you're trying to always do is match up the same diameter of rootstock with your scion wood. So again, same sort of cut, 45, 60 degrees, nice and tight, pushing through the wood, pulling the blade, just trying to get that really straight cut. So halfway down again, seesaw the blade down nice and gently Try not to split it as you go, and that should be pretty good. That's opened it up, so I use the blade to open it up. Okay, so we have our, our rootstock cut and our sign wood, both with a whip and tongue cut made in them. Now the idea is we, we join them, and, and that's making our tree. And this is why it's good with the corners, because with the different colours, it highlights that zigzag cut, 
and the idea is that tongue helps to hold it. Let's see, push it a little further. And the idea is that actually um, in, the, in a bench grafting shop, you'd have one person making the cuts and a second person to do the taping. So this is part of the reason you have a tongue, is saying we pass to the next person joined and they tape it up. So we, we've worked with our corners, we've practiced our cuts, we're happy that we're, we're getting good straight true cuts, we've made our whip and tongue, so now we're happy and, and confident with our knife and now we're going to start using our, our rootstocks and also our apple cyanwood. So the two rootstocks we have today are M9 and MM106. Both restrictive rootstocks but the M9 is a more restrictive rootstock and what that does is it slows the growth of the tree down. We want the apple to remain small, often used for, for stepovers or, or smaller trained trees and the MM106 is also restrictive, but you'll get a larger tree. The idea is to keep the fruit within picking height and keeping the tree within a, a, a more domestic size, let's say. We've got it wrapped up and kept moist. You've got a very uh, young, fibrous root system. So the idea is to keep the roots moist and protected from what's often worse is a drying wind. That's what really dries roots out. So it's protected and you can see these are good, healthy, uh, rootstock, see a good fibrous root system, this one particularly, and that's really, that's what's given the tree its energy and vigor to get the sap flowing and get your new graft growing. You're looking at making your cut around 10 to 15 centimeters above your final bit of root here, somewhere around that height. And then when you're looking at the wood, you want to find a nice clear bit where you don't have a bud. So a nice clean bit of wood and ideally a straight bit of wood that you're going to cut through. Again, holding yourself up nice and tight, nice and mechanical. With the blade against the wood, you're going to draw it through. It's a little harder than the corners, so if your first cut's not perfect, you can just carve away. That's not bad, we'll go with that. It's got the right angle, and we've got a nice straight cut. So that's our whip cut made, and now we can put the tongue into it. Same as what we did before, seesaw cut down about halfway through our first cut. Again, the wood of the apple is a little harder, so a little more resistance, so it's just about really pushing down with control. You don't want to split the wood, but you do need to open it up. And now we have our cyan wood, same or similar diameter, so we can cut anywhere in this bottom third of this piece of cyan wood here and it should be about the right size and we just want to do our best to make a cut that aligns well with our first cut on our rootstock. It's a reasonable cut but it's not quite flat and straight so what we'll do is just shave a bit more off to really match it with our original first cut and that's pretty good. We've got a bit of a tail there which is not ideal but that'll be fine. What I'm also going to do quickly whilst we're here is just cut the top end of this off just because we know we don't need that anymore. We still have enough buds here just to get it out of the way, make everything a little easier whilst we work with it. So now the tongue cut made into our cyan wood. And what you have is what's called the cambium layer. And because you don't want to touch it with your hand, any of the work you do, you always do with the knife and the blade. Your hands have oils on them that can interfere with how well the, the, the tree grafts back together. And what you can see here is this very bright green just within the bark there, layer, and that's the cambium layer. And that is where cells divide, and eventually that's where your graft will be made and the joining will happen between. So what you're looking for when making a good graft is cambium contact between your rootstock here and your sign wood here. And this is what you're really looking at and when you're, you're pushing them together gently it's doing your best to align the cambium that bright green layer because that's where the tree is going to graft and create what's known as the union you're opening up those cuts you've made with the whip and, and the tongue there and you can see it just sliding in they've locked in nicely we have good cambium contact here and now it should hold itself like this but now what we really need to do is tape it and the tape wall is what's going to hold it really tight and really pinch the grafts in together and then over the next three weeks the, the two bits of tree will, will fuse together. You're going to work your way up around your graft that you've made. On the first travel up you want to get 
a reasonable amount of tension to really get that cambium contact good. And then once you're coming back down again, you can really stretch that tape out. What you're aiming to do is to squeeze those joins as tight and as close as possible. So once you've reached the top, covered the graft, you can then work your way back down again and the tape has a good amount of stretch and this is where you're really joining. And what it also does is helps to keep out the weather. You want that graft to stay as dry as possible until the cells have fused and brought the, the rootstock and the sign together. So we've gone up, down, and the, the biggest challenge for me is always tying it off. But the idea is to go round what you've done, bring it between your two fingers, and by pulling it through like that, you get it nice and tight and you're finished off. And there you have essentially your finished article. So final stage, we've made a graft um, and we've taped it up and you can see now it's good and secure. So we're happy. We can put it up and you can be pretty, pretty robust with it and it's, it's going to be fine. But bear in mind that, you know, it is a brand new tree. So get good soil around your roots like with all potting, just with a standard multi-purpose compost. Your tree will be happy in there for another year or two, getting the roots really packed out and then you can um, plant it out. And now really important to keep everything labelled as you go. So we were grafting the variety Comtesse de Parry. It's a crab apple that we grow quite a lot of here. And uh, Paul Ross is going to start using it in his cider blend. So we're getting as many, many made up here as possible now because he'll soon be reaping the reward of those. So we've come into the glass house because it's a little windy outside and it's just now to cut our, our tree or scion to the height we want to, to what will be our, our final bud here. So we're going to cut usually around three or four to three or fourth bud. And now we come in here with our wax because what we want to do is just seal the top of where we've just pruned because because we've created this, this new tree, it's not able to sustain itself. So what the wax does, it helps to seal in the moisture. And also what we'll do is we'll put wax across the tape. Again, it helps to solidify and, and create a crust around it just to stop any movement. That tree is going to be there for another year or so before we plant it out. So it just really helps to, to hold it tight. A bit like if you had a broken arm and a cast, the wax is going to hold it there until it's healed itself and that union is formed and it's turned back into one brand new tree.